just add them, just, just saying. Okay, so um, now that we've talked about examples of what disciples should be, how that discipleship can lead us to conversion, Jesus also gives us a couple of examples about what not to be as a disciple. Now, disciples should not be casual. And no, I'm not referring to wearing sweatpants to class like I do every day. Uh, See, so as Jesus and his disciples were continuing on their journey, they came upon this man who was bold enough to declare that he would follow Jesus wherever he went. But Jesus was blunt and told the man that they wouldn't be staying at any Holiday Inn Express. See, Jesus didn't sugarcoat what he and his disciples would be going through. If this man were to follow the Lord, there would be no going back home. The life of a disciple often call the followers to live like a stranger and a pilgrim on their journey to eternal life. See, Jesus needed to teach his disciples that you can't pick and choose when or where or how you're going to serve the Lord. You simply can't be a casual disciple by only choosing to follow Jesus when it's exciting or convenient. Now, along came another man to whom Jesus said, follow me. Now this man asked if he could first just go and bury his father, you know, a reasonable request. But Jesus answered him saying, first things first, your business as my follower is life, not death. Let the dead bury the dead. You go and tell the whole world of the kingdom of God. Now, when I first read this part of the discipleship guide, I was kind of taken aback by Jesus' response. But as I read on, the guide explained that Jesus was simply trying to instill some priorities into the life, lives of his disciples. Jesus was actually telling the spiritually dead, in other words, those who chose not to follow him, he was telling them to go and bury the physically dead. Because even family ties and obligations cannot distract someone from pro proclaiming the kingdom of God. In this way, Jesus asked his followers to settle their internal conflicts by focusing on God as their sole priority. Now, Jesus' third example of how not to be a disciple comes from a man who declares that he will follow Jesus, but first he just wants to wish his family goodbye. <laughs> now, Jesus replied to this man saying, don't look back, don't procrastinate. You can't put off God's kingdom until tomorrow. Seize the day and follow me. Jesus didn't forbid this man from saying goodbye to his family, but he needed the follower to know that this would be a final farewell. There could be no conditions, no ifs, buts, or whens, only a total surrender to Jesus. Now, as you can tell, discipleship really isn't that complicated. You can tell from previous examples, from the first followers of Jesus, that discipleship was even made for dummies. Discipleship is, however, costly. But you can look at the cost as an investment in your future that will eventually bring you great reward. And not only that, but it's also an investment into the future of those around you. Jesus calls each one of us to pick up our burden, to bear our cross, because the way of the cross is the way of the disciple. Now, the question just comes down to whether you are living for this life or looking forward to the next, because you can't do both. Now, does anybody have any questions? Crescent? book that Emily gave me? Yeah. Haven't you heard of the Bible? Yeah. yeah. I... Chrysler, come on, you have... You, you probably read all these stories, you know, in the last... probably the last year or so. <laughs> have, you, have you read the Gospel of Luke? Yeah. You know, Luke chapter 9? Alright, well, all of you, when you get home, go and open your Bible to Luke chapter 9. Read through it and see, see what Jesus has to say to you. Now... Jesus decided to send his disciples off into the world to make more disciples. And here he's calling you to do the same. So Jesus approached the disciples and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all